good evening guys and welcome to the beginning of a really 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 exciting series that I'm going to be starting on my channel which I feel like it's been the longest time in the making and in the process and I've wanted to film this particular video for so long now. I mean you can already see from the title what this is going to be about and I am officially on a journey to buy my first property by myself. That is just terrifying. So if you have ever heard your parents or anyone else say, buying a house is up there with one of the most stressful things you can do in your lifetime alongside divorce and having a child and all these other things. And I'm not even half in the process yet and I'm already stressed. Like it's a lot of, it's a lot. <laughs> but I thought I would just kind of sit down and talk with you today and share with you what to expect. I do share a lot of my life online and I feel like this is too big of a thing not to share. And I also kind of wanted to document it for myself because it's such a huge, huge deal and something I'm super proud to be able to say that I can do by myself. And I just want to take you along for the ride and share it with you and talk you through everything. So today's video, like I said, is just gonna be talking you through the kind of beginning steps and all that kind of fun stuff. I guess I should kind of start from the beginning and talk you through my current thoughts and all that kind of stuff and then things might change, things might take longer, they might take less time, this could be in a year's time that I'm starting to buy, it could be in two years, it could be in six months, it's just going to be one of those processes that just could be a bit all over the show. So for a bit of background, I have been saving to buy a house for the best part of I want to say maybe like a year I've been like actively saving towards buying a house always kind of considered it to be by myself I kind of want to own a property on my own regardless of like relationship status or anything like that I've just I've always wanted the security of owning a house by myself basically just as like an investment because I think property investing is one of the best things you could possibly do for your finances and it's just something I'm really interested in and really passionate about and I kind of have been for a really long time. I'm going way off topic, but essentially, yes, I want to buy a house by myself. But I obviously moved into this place in August and my tenancy for here is up in the re next, the remaining August, the next August. And I'd kind of always set myself the goal of when I leave this house, I want to be in a position where I can buy or very, very, very close to buying. So whether I leave here and I move straight into a house that I've bought, whether I have made an offer on a house and then I rent for a couple more months somewhere else or here and then I move because I think I can do a one month rolling on this place. I'm not 100% sure, but I think I might be able to. If not, I've found the area that I want to move to. I found Airbnbs that are like studio or one bedroom flats that you can rent for a prolonged period of time. So I could rent like a studio flat for three months or something, keep my stuff in storage, and then obviously wait for contracts to be exchanged and whatever. Or the other option, so there's kind of three options. So there's moving straight away, moving and renting for a bit, or there's moving out of this place, renting in the area that I want to buy and then buying in like a year or two years time when I've got a little bit more money under my belt. So at the moment I'm kind of saving with the hope that in June time I can start really seriously looking which is obviously only three months away which is really scary. <laughs> area wise I'm moving out of London 1000%. I've kind of never really planned to stay in London as long as I did. London for me was always a one or two year plan and it's ended up being a four or five year plan. Um, but when I moved into this house, obviously uh, I'm still in London and I'd hoped that I would be able to kind of have a year on my own living here, enjoy the city, enjoy my friends and make the most of a final like hurrah, I guess. And obviously that's gone completely the opposite way and it's just been, we haven't been able to do anything. We've been in lockdown for most of the time I've lived here. So when I moved in, it was kind of a bit free. And then it went to tier two, then we went to tier three, then we were in lockdown, then we were out of lockdown, then we were in lockdown again. And in the six or seven months that I've lived here, I've actually been able to go out and enjoy London for maybe a month of that. <laughs> so I haven't made the most of it, but obviously none of us knew this would happen. And had we have predicted the future, I'd have moved back to the area I want to live in a lot sooner. Obviously, for the sake of my safety, I'm not going to be divulging exactly where I'm going to be living, but I am looking at Surrey, which is where I grew up, it's where I'm from, it's where I went to uni, it's where all my friends are, and friends are the reason I'm moving back there, if I'm completely honest, because I love the area so much, it's so beautiful, 
Surrey as a whole is just a stunning county. There's so much beauty there. There's, it, I just love it. Like it's one of my favorite places in the world. And I really want to be close to my friends again because I've lived away from my friends now for, it makes me emotional. Why does it make me emotional? I've lived away from my friends since I went to uni, which was in 2013. And I briefly moved back for six months after university and then ended up going traveling and then I ended up in London and I miss my friends so much. Like I still see them all the time. They still come up here, I still go there, but all of my closest friends are in the same area and it just makes sense for me to be back there. And family wise, I kind of have family all over the place. So family for me isn't really a priority in living because I kind of just, they literally live everywhere. And what I would love to have in a property has had to change dramatically because I am moving to one of the most expensive parts of England. And to be honest, I'm gonna have to kind of look at the area and like scan all around and see where it works out cheaper, see where I like, see where I feel comfortable, where is X amount of distance from this person or whatever. And ideally, I want somewhere that is a three or a four bed. I want a garden because to be honest, I think having been in lockdown, it's been so horrible not having a garden the first time. And even just having a balcony now has been a game changer for me. Like I honestly can't tell you how much I've loved having a balcony. So I think a garden is actually really important to me. I want my kitchen and living room to potentially be separate rooms, but I'm not that bothered if they're not. Like ideally I'd like that, but I'm not bothered. I still haven't quite decided whether I want a new build or a like renovation project or, I don't know, it's, it's a hard one, isn't it? Because you can go for a new build, you can go for a full on renovation or you can go for a middle one where it's a nice house, but you wanna change a few things and make them your own. And I'm not really sure what I wanna do in that respect, but I just know that I need three or four bedrooms and I know that I need it to have a garden and a driveway. That's kind of my main priorities. And to be honest, other than that, I just want somewhere that I can call my own and somewhere that I can walk in and just be like, oh my God, this place feels like home. Like when I walk in this apartment, and every single person who's ever been to my apartment has said the same thing. It's just the most calming space, even though it's a little bit noisy because it's still London, even though you're in a block, so there's still other people around, it's got the most calming presence. Like it just is, I can't even explain it. Like it literally is a calming space. And that's what I kind of want to reiterate because I've never lived somewhere that's made me feel really calm and really at home until here, obviously apart from parents, others, but that's kind of a vibe that I really want to feel when I walk into another property. Like when I first came to view this place with Sarah, we both just knew, like I walked in and was like, this is, this is where I'm meant to live. And she walked in and kind of said the exact same thing. And we just knew that this is where I was meant to live. So that's really important is that I get a good vibe. Whether I'm that person who views 500 properties or three properties, I don't know, but we will see when the time comes. And to be honest, that's part of the fun of this series. I want to take you to viewings with me if I can. I wanna make sure that I talk about budgeting with you and like all these different potential possible videos I could even consider making to do with buying a house. I want to do them. Any ideas that you've possibly got, ping them my way. I've already got a list of about eight or nine videos that are gonna be coming up and I'm so excited to share them with you because it's just an exciting process and I literally cannot wait to have a house to call my own. And I think documenting it through videos and starting even this video is just making it seem so much more real because it's something I've talked about for years, well, for a year. And I talk about consistently with my friends and my managers. Like I literally go on about this bloody mortgage more than I think I've ever gone on about anything. I do also refer to my future house as my mansion. You've got to manifest that stuff, but it's not gonna be a mansion. If I was living somewhere up north or somewhere a lot cheaper, then yes, potentially it could be a bit bigger, but I'm moving to an expensive area and I've just got to accept that I need to cut my losses. But yeah, that's kind of where I'm at with it. I'm very excited, I'm very nervous. I'm also, I'm also really like nervous making a video about it because I feel like then there's an expectation that I'm gonna be buying 100% in summer. And to be completely honest, that's 90% what I think is gonna happen. However, I'm kind of allowing for the extra 10% of like potentially having to rent for another year, but in a different area or whatever the case may be. But obviously that's part of the video fun. I can take you along with me and I'm gonna think up a cool series name, which I don't know what it's gonna be yet. I think I'm gonna end the video here because I've waffled on for a good 15, 20 minutes now. And I'm very excited to bring you guys along with me. I hope you're excited to be on this journey with me because some of you have been through many house moves with me now and 
I'm sure you're just gonna be as excited as I am to see what I end up living in and what I end up doing to it and kind of future journeys on life. So yeah, thank you for always supporting me, as always. Thank you for allowing me to do things like buy a house because if it wasn't for you guys watching my videos and commenting and giving me loads and loads and loads of support, I would not be able to buy a house. I'm gonna stop waffling now and end the video. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up if you like it, leave me a comment and tell me any video ideas or any tips you've got for me buying a house or anything you wanna tell me in the comments and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.